trig ratios. And I guess here, let's take a look at a few examples. So I'm going to make the assumption that you kind of watched the video related to um, trigonometric ratios for angles which are greater than 90 degrees. I'll put up a link up above there um, for you. So this is kind of a continuation where I want to kind of test you if you understand uh, the concepts learned in there. And all I want to do is just kind of do some computations, see if you understand the various ratios with regards to if they're going to be positive or negative. Okay, so the first question here is, is the answer positive or negative? And I give you basically six examples. And so it's not compute what the actual ratio would be, so what the answer would be, but rather you should know if the answer should be positive or negative just based on the angle. And just to give you a hint, you know, when you're working with these, the way that I remember, you know, I always kind of go back and think of the um, quadrant of the X and Y quadrant. And then if you're going to be creating these angles, so when you have these angles right here, um, where do they fall, right? In which quadrant do they fall? So 117, so it's bigger than 90, but it's less than 180. So it's gonna fall um, you know, somewhere within here. Now it's not exactly accurate, but this is the angle that we have. So it falls in the second quadrant, right? Now you can continue this and you can say, okay, well 272, you know, which quadrant that does fall? Well, this one actually is gonna fall just slightly over, okay, and it's gonna enter into the fourth quadrant. So we have our first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and then our fourth quadrant. And then, you know, the angles kind of fall in somewhere in between there. Now, why is that important to know in which quadrant they fall? Well, the reason is because if you know which quadrant it is in, then you know the sines and cosines in terms of the um, sine itself, right? So what sign is it? Is it positive or is it negative? So for example, in the first quadrant, we know that the um, cos value is positive and then the sine value is also positive because you're in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, um, we know that the x, k, okay, or the cos value would have been negative, but the sine value would have been positive. So you can think back, you know, when you're drawing these things out, always think back, okay, what are the quadrants um, and the ordered pairs within that quadrant? Are they positive or negative? So in the third quadrant, for instance, you know, both, okay, are actually negative. So both your cos and your sine. And always kind of relate back cos, okay, to the x value of the coordinate. And then sine is related back to the y value because it's the y. And that is coming from the opposite and adjacent of the angle that you have. All right. And then in the fourth quadrant, then you have one is positive, so the cos is positive, but the sign is negative because it's pointing downwards. So now, based on that, I can very quickly be able to walk through these. So for instance, 117 is in the second quadrant. Now I want the sign, so this is going to be positive right there. Um, now, 272 is actually in the fourth quadrant, and I want the cos, and now cos is also positive. Now, tangent, okay, uh, 79, 79 um, the degrees is in the first quadrant, and we know that the values for the sine and the cos are positive, so the tangent is also going to be positive right there. Okay, now, cosecant, okay, so what the heck is cosecant? Well, you may remember, so this is nothing else but simply just the reciprocal, okay, so this is gonna be the reciprocal of sine, of 359. Now, one over that, so the reciprocals, the sign doesn't change, the sign will be the same. So really what you're asking here, because you want to be able to know if it's positive or negative, okay, is, is the sign of 359 positive or negative? And in this case, well, 359 degrees is in the fourth quadrant, right, it's just one degree below, okay, the axes. And that means that the sine, which is going to be the y value, is going to be negative. So here, this is negative. Now, the secant. Secant is one, okay, so over cos of 196. And now, 196, okay, so where is that um, heading? 
Well, 196 is basically in the third quadrant, right? Because it's going to be 180 plus, I guess, 16. So it's in the third quadrant, so that this will be negative. And then finally, cotangent. Now notice cotangent is just the reciprocal of the tangent, and it's 380 degrees. So we're kind of going all the way around the circle. It's 360 plus another 20 degrees, so you're back to the first quadrant. And in the first quadrant, all the values are positive, right? So this is what you have there. So that's kind of how I remember which ones are positive, which ones are negative, just by simply in which quadrant do they land, okay? If I would take an angle and then create an angle kind of as a, you know, a circle with some particular radius. So this is part one. Part two, here it asks the... Um, asks us find the ratio without using a calculator now it's giving us specific ones and it's actually what we will need here if you're not going to use a calculator so these really we're going to have to know the 30 we're going to have to know the 45 and then the 60 angles and then what they give now how will you remember this so first okay so this you know the 30 45 and 60 there's a, a video that I did, with the, which is the continuation of these grade 11 videos. I'll put up a link up above there if you want to review that um, topic for yourself. Okay, And now let's try to dive in here, and then I'll kind of go back and forth without, without using a calculator to find what these ratios are. So first, cos of 60. All right, well, cos of 60, well, it is one of these angles. Now... To kind of remember this, you know, how you can do it is in this way. Um, if you don't, you know, if you don't kind of remember um, right off the bat or you just kind of, you know, stuck or you're nervous on a test, I always plot, you know, my X and Y and then I would put up a line for myself like this, which is, you know, here approximately, approximating, so this is the 60 degrees. So this would have been 60 degrees right here and that would have been your triangle falling down. And now notice, the cos is always really just the x value of it. And then the sine is really the y value, right? So now you can kind of see which one is bigger, which one is smaller. Now for 60 and for 30 degrees, you're going to assume that the hypotenuse is always 2. Okay? Now with this being 2, this means that this is square root of 3, and then this is 1. And this is where it comes from. So the link that I was telling you, Okay, to take a look at, that's where this is coming from. So cos of 60 um, is basically just 1 over 2. That's what this would equal because it is adjacent over high hypotenuse. All right, so it would have been 0 0.5. Now, since this is just a video and you're practicing, you know, you can, you can kind of cheat and say, okay, well, they said no calculator, but let me just, you know, go and check, you know, is this going to give me what I want? And, you know, 1 over 2 is a half. So you can always kind of double check if you forget, um, but it's always useful to know these ratios. Okay, now the next one. This is now the sine of 120. So now sine of 120, well, that's bigger than 90 degrees, right? But this, if you may remember, this is just sine. This is, I guess, in the second quadrant. So it's going to be 180 minus, okay? And this is going to be minus 60. So really what it is, now you're in the in the second quadrant, um, the sine, right, which is the, the y value, is actually positive, and it's going to be equal to then exactly what is sine of 60 is. But hey, wait a minute, we just did sine of 60 right here. So my ratio is going to be, okay, opposite over hypotenuse, which is the square root of 3 um, over 2. Now, what about tangent of 240? So what is this equal to? So again, you know, so where does 240 land me? Well, 240 is going to land me, I guess, in the third quadrant, right? Because it goes 90, 180, 270. So it's less than 270. So it's going to be somewhere over here. So it's in the third quadrant. So this means that this is going to be 180 plus. And now what is it plus? Well, it's plus, notice, 60 again. Okay, so now in that third quadrant, both the sine and the cos are negative because you're in the third quadrant. So if they're both negative, 
that means that if you want to be able to take, so this is going to be 10 of 60, and it's going to be positive because sine over cos is 10, right? And they're both negative numbers, so the negatives will cancel. So therefore, all I'm looking for is what is the tangent of 60, which is opposite over adjacent, and that would be just the square root of 3, which is going to be like 1.7 something. I can't remember what that square root is. Now, for the next one, so for this, so secant of 315, well, that's going to land me now in the fourth quadrant, right? Now, so what is this? This is basically, so um, my secant is the reciprocal of my cos, Okay, so first, so what is, so this is the reciprocal of my cos, so it's going to be cos of 315. Now, what is that equal to? So now cos of 315 is the same thing, so this is going to be cos, I guess, of 360 minus, right? Now you are in the fourth quadrant, so it's going to be minus, I guess, 45 degrees, and this equals to 1 over, so cos of 45 and now you are in the fourth quadrant, okay? The cos value is still positive in the fourth quadrant. And in this case, so 45 degrees, if you forget, so how do you, you know, remember the 45 degree? Okay, so this is 45 degrees right there. Okay, that's your um, hypotenuse. And then you just set these, so these will be one and one, and this would have, was square root of two. Okay, to try to remember. And that came from the square. All right, so that's kind of how I remember these. And now, so notice if you want the cos, it's going to be just one over the square root of two. But it is the reciprocal, so that means this is gonna be just square root of two for yourself. And you can check that, right? So let's take a look, because I'm kind of going on now. So what is cos? Okay, so I guess we have to take one over the cos, okay, so this is cos of 315, okay, and what does it equal? 1.4142, so on, but that, of course, let me clear that, is nothing else but the square root of 2, okay, and that's what it was. So now, continuing on, maybe I should move these aside, duplicate it, okay, so now this one, so what is this equal to? This is cosecant. Well, cosecant is one over sine. This is gonna be one over the sine of 150. What is that equal to? So which quadrant does that fall? Hmm, well, that falls in the second quadrant. So if it's in the second quadrant, then what I have, so this is gonna be, so sine of 180 minus, and this is going to be, I guess, minus 30. Now, in the second quadrant, what is the sign? Is it positive or negative? The second quadrant sign, which is the y value, is positive. So this is going to be just 1 over sine of 30. But what is sine of 30? So let me go back in here. So sine of 30, so this is, you can kind of cheat a little bit. If this is 60 right here, Okay, so that means this angle is 30, right? Because this is a right angle triangle. And now sine just simply means opposite over hypotenuse. Well, this is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's one over two. Let me go back in here. So this is just gonna be now one over two, so that means the reciprocal of it is just two, okay? And again, let's take a look. So here, so one, divided by, and it's going to be sine, so just a check for ourselves, sine of 150 equals 2. So there we have it. So it kind of tests all your um, understandings of these and being able to comfortably go around, okay, and in different quadrants with respect to the angle. The last one is cotangent of 45. Well, cotangent of 45 is just nothing else but 1 over tangent of 45. But 45 is in the first quadrant, right? And 45, so this was 45 right here. 
which is just one over one, which is one. So cotangent and tangent of 45 are equivalent and it's equal to one. So these are great examples, which I hope, you know, you can pause the video and try them on your own. And ultimately, you know, it kind of forces you to go back and try to see if you remember these angles of 30, 45, and 60. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.